So this video introduces the Human Dynamics of Climate Change poster to help you navigate your way around it and access all the information it shows you for yourself. The poster presents the latest science on climate change impacts in the context of human activity to help highlight the connections between climate change and the outcomes for the way we live. It was produced by the Met Office Hadley Centre with scientific contributions from a number of other leading climate science institutions. In the centre of the map shows the present day human dynamics. Down each side are six maps which show eight different climate change impacts as well as population growth. In the centre, below the present day human dynamics map, are a number of short case study narratives which take you through the information for selected regions. The best place to start looking at the poster is with the central present day human dynamics map which sets the context for how we live today. The purple shading on this map shows population density. The orange shading indicates regions experiencing water stress in the present day. We've included information on our agricultural trade for four major crops, wheat, maize, soybean and rice. Up arrows indicate a country that exports that crop and down arrows indicate major importers. Volumes of fish catch are shown. For the maritime regions, the volume of fish caught annually is indicated by the size of the fish in that region. This helps us understand which oceans are the most important for fish protein. Glaciers are also indicated as they are important parts of the local water security system. And regions exposed to tropical cyclone activity are also marked. Countries which appear on the Fragile States Index are outlined in red. We've included this because it's an indicator of governance and therefore tells us something about the country's ability to respond to extreme weather events or to adapt to long-term changes in climate. We've shown ports, airports and shipping routes as well as maritime choke points, which are narrow straits through which large volumes of shipping passes. We've included these because they're important critical infrastructure and it supports global trade. Around the edge, there are six climate maps, which between them show eight different climate impacts and also population change. The impacts are represented by icons for the average change over the region. Red icons means an increase in climate stress and green icons a decrease. And behind those icons, the map shows something about the spatial pattern for each impact. The project projections that we've shown follow what is known as a business as usual greenhouse gas concentration scenario. This is also called RCP 8.5. This means that the maps show the impacts we might see if we take no action to tackle the causes of climate change. As we wanted the information to be given in the context of human dynamics, we also needed to include a population scenario. And for this, we use one called SSP2. It's a middle-of-the-road po population projection and it's consistent with the greenhouse gas scenario we've used. Finally, all the changes that you see on these maps are the difference between the present day and the end of the century. So let's look at the impacts. The first map in the top left-hand corner of the poster shows a future change in water runoff. Runoff is the water that's available for use from rainfall, taking into account anything that's lost due to evaporation. This is a critical value for water security, and with changes in weather patterns, there are some regions that will see an increase in runoff while others a decrease, and this is shown on the map. Below this map is one that shows the future change in water demand for irrigation. Water demand for irrigation is a description of the amount of water that crops need to meet their water requirements. In a warmer world, crops will need more water, and you can see here that the demand increases everywhere. Then in the bottom left hand corner is a map showing the future change in average crop yield in production regions. Production regions means regions where there's at least 1% of the global production of that crop is grown there. The four crops are wheat, maize, soybean and rice and the range of projections shown on this map is quite large. There are both increases and decreases in yield for wheat, rice and soybean in different regions. However, the projections for maize mainly show decreases. These changes in yield need to be viewed alongside the other changes though, such as the change in water availability from rainfall and increase in demand from water crops, which we've already shown. The changes in yield assume that the demand for water is being met, and they also represent the average change in yield and not the variability from year to year. Then if we go to the top right-hand corner, we can see the change in droughts and the change in temperature on the warmest days of the year. The projections here for increases in the numbers of days in drought globally and increases in the temperature of the warmest day of the year. And this indicates more frequent and severe heat waves. 
Below that map, there's a map showing the future change in flood frequency and also the annual numbers of people affected by coastal flooding. The projections for flooding are quite mixed, but large regions of the globe will see increases in frequency of flood, while smaller areas seeing a decrease. That's inland flooding, but on the coast we see tens of millions of people flooded due to a combination of sea level rise and population increase. This assumes that these coastal communities don't adapt to any changes in climate. And then finally in the bottom right hand corner there's a map showing the future change in sea surface temperature and population change by country. This shows that the temperature of the surface of the oceans is also projected to increase. Combining this with ocean acidification threatens marine ecosystems and consequently there's a concern for fish stocks. Finally, all of these changes take place at the same time as global population increases and the demands on resources will rise as a result. So we look at the post as a whole, in the central panel of the poster, underneath the present day dynamics map, there are some illustrative examples of how this information can come together and show the impacts of climate change in given regions. These are just a few examples though, so please have a look at the map yourself, look at the different regions and see what connections you can make. <laughs>